This presentation is on the Final Finger Puppet Management Presentation for Principles of Management. This is by Brina, Brian, Keith, Ravi, and Ravina. As you can see, this is our table of contents. And you can see on page number three, we have the introduction of Monstropolis. On page four, we have the characters listed. Episode one would be on pages five and six. Episode two, would be on pages seven and eight. Our general conclusions would be on page nine. Group reflections will be pages 10 through 12. The recommendations will be on page 13. The introduction. This page portrays many of the managerial concepts that Sully has placed in order at the new and improved Laughing Factory. One of the biggest managerial concepts being how to overcome obstacles. The show portrays why having a strong leader like Sully is important in the workplace. Our show takes place in the bustling city of Monstropolis, where the town is almost entirely employed through the company in the city center. The business has just changed courses and is now practicing new approaches to revenue. What was once a former scarce factory is now a laughing factory. The purpose of our show is to convey our viewers the different aspects of management and the importance of strong leadership and ethical behavior in the workplace. We'll, we will focus on key elements such as managing change in the workplace through globalization, technology, and resources, basic approaches to ethical decision making, how a business monitors or implements ethics as well as individual barometers of ethics in the workplace, strategies on improving decision making in the workplace, such as group decision making and individual decision making. Entry barriers through the difficulties of changing a business model to an entirely different standard. Managing human resources and hierarchical struggles in the workplace, such as organize, organizational designs and structures. The characters include four main characters. James P. Sullivan is the first character who is also known as Sully. He's a new COO at Monsters Incorporated. He is a passionate man who does and tries to do everything he can to keep the team motivated towards the continued success of the company. He is appreciated by all of his friends and co-workers throughout the Monsters universe and believes in doing what is right. He is very proficient in thinking and has the confidence and ability to inspire everyone. He continues to spread all his positive energy and vision greater than anyone's and everyone's negativity. Mike Wazowski is an energetic and dynamic insistent manager at a new and improved laughing factory. He comes up with an idea called the laughing floor, which sparks the interest in the majority of the employees at the factory. He is an analytical thinker and has a fun loving personality, which makes him easy to get along with at work. Randall Boggs. Randall is a formal top employee within the company. Due to the outperformance and changes within the company, Randall has become dissatisfied with his employees and management. Due to a lack of social consensus, Randall seeks to make changes in an unethical way to rise to the top of the company. He is an analytical thinker with no moral compass and no moral integrity, which makes him very hard to work with. Ross is the human resources at the new and improved Laughing Factory. Ross is by the book and has little interaction with employees on a personal level. Her standard operational procedural 
approach gets in the way of building trustful relationships with her staff and the management team. She is reserved, short and blunt, and only focused on the job at hand. This makes her a valuable employee to the company, but not very easy to work with or work for. The first episode is the first day at the job. Sully and Mike are starting their new roles as managers of the new and improved Monsters Incorporated. Sully is the COO and he is being faced with a dilemma now. He is unsure of what management of what management style he should apply in his new role. He remembers the typology of decision roles and deems an entrepreneurial role would best fit his current position. He wanted to be routinely engaged in the everyday decisions within the company. He also found that this role applicable to his complete overhaul of the company's process in collecting energy. Since laughter was his brain child, he figured it'd be best to involved at the ground level. Episode one, the first day on the job. Mike and Sully are starting a new venture as managers of a new and improved laughing factory. Sully, being the new COO, is contemplating his new management style. Hey Sully, are you excited for the first day as the big chief? Yeah, I'm just nervous about how people will perceive me. I don't want to be that manager that everyone is afraid of. Well, that's the great thing about being your own boss, though. You can choose how you want to manage and who you want to be. As long as you're not anything like Roz, I think that will be good. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. I'll tell you what, I think this company is going to go far with us behind the wheel. You said it, partner. You said it. Sully decides the best approach of management would be through the entrepreneurial role. In this role, managers make routine decisions and also frequently engage in activities and explore new opportunities and start new projects. Since the Laughing Factory is his new idea and the foundation in which the company lies in now, he figured it'd be the best approach. The second episode is called Second Chances. In episode two, two, we see Sully faced with his first human resource management dilemma. A former employee with known behavioral issues wants his job back. Sully is unsure if hiring this employee is the best decision for the company. But he remembers the universal approach to ethical decision making. He implements the golden rule which is treat others how you would want to be treated. Using this rule, he takes a course of action that he believes can apply to all the employees in all situations. He formulates a behavioral contract, which becomes a standard process within the company. It allows him to take a chance and treat all employees with the same and equal consequences. Episode 2, Second Chances. Sully is faced with his first dilemma as manager. A former employee with known behavioral problems is given a second chance. So you know why we're meeting today, Boggs, right? Yes, yes. I know I screwed up last time, but I promise I won't do it again, boss. If you give me a second chance, I promise I'll show you. I've changed. I've thought long and hard about this, and I'm willing to give you that chance, but with stipulations. Human Resources and I came up with what I believe to be an appropriate behavior contract. All the details are there laying out consequences to your behaviors and what constitutes as a verbal, written, and final warning. I'm taking a chance on you, Boggs. Please don't let me down. Oh, you won't regret it, boss. <laughs> Sully takes a universal approach to 
ethical decision making by implementing a behavior contract as well as showing employees that there is forgiveness in the workplace. But mistakes have consequences. General conclusions. We can conclude that working in a group setting can present its own obstacles. A group who communicates clearly is more likely to be successful than a group who does not. While the project has been a success, we can always do better than we did yesterday. Using a creative outlet to present managerial scenarios is very effective for students to learn. It allows us to express ourselves and relate our characters on a personal level. More importantly, it serves as a visual platform that demonstrates key concepts while holding the audience's attention. The goal for most students is to get a good job. This class will definitely prepare them for that by giving them a moral and ethical baseline for any career. The demonstration of examples of managerial behavior and teaching individuals how to operate in a group setting. Group reflections. We have reflections from every person in the group, beginning with Brina. I would have never experienced that in all of my college education, I would have to produce a TV show with a group based on a cartoon film. At first, I was skeptical, skeptical of going into the semester. I got to meet some awesome team members, acquire valuable managerial concepts, and learn how to communicate more effectively. This project helped me learn the intrinsic value of communication and how to work in groups. The next is by Brian. I can say that at first I was hesitant of this class. I remember looking at the syllabus and shuddering. The amount of work, detail, and organization this calls required was daunting enough. Being at the end of the semester, I can say I'm rather proud of myself. The team I was paired up with couldn't have been better. We worked well together and learned about each other's strengths and weaknesses. I have a lot to take away from this class and can't apply can't wait to apply it to my career. The next is by Ravina. When I first got into the class, I was wondering how it would be to work with a group on big projects via online collaboration methods. I never thought that I would understand the concepts of and principles of management through such a creative and personalized way. The project allowed us to pick an analogy which helped us remember the concepts. I learned different ways of communicating, collaborating, and making presentations. And the next is by Ravi. Throughout the course, I have been able to develop my understanding with a few important topics relative to the group work and today's environment. We worked well together to plan, assign, and complete all of our assignments successfully. With the group, I learned how to collaborate and combine multiple assignments, which is something I could never have done on my own. The team got a chance to learn a lot from each other, and this experience will certainly help our ways in organizing, conflict resolving, and team working skills. The last is by Keith. Throughout the milestone assignments, everyone has an opportunity to work in a different position, helping to understand roles and responsibility. Communication above all else, a team with poor communication wouldn't have been able to delegate responsibilities and work together to assemble the moving parts of an assignment. Future recommendations include communication, which is to find a platform that all group members can agree upon using and always have a backup effective management to assign each member a specific task so that there's something that everyone can be accountable for. Time management, if we plan early, we will be more successful and have more time and prevent mis more mistakes. Comprehension is important because everyone should understand why they're doing what they're doing to see the big end goal in picture. And tools that could be used are Google Drive, Google Hangouts, PowerPoint, video embedding, pictures, and GIFs. Monstropolis out.